Good morning, everyone. Let me see your hands. Mike, Kathy, there you go. Everybody know the Miami fans, y'all quit waving. You're waving fans of victory, I can tell. Good to see you guys. <coughs> Need you to pull out your bulletin. I know folks are coming in from the outside, getting ready for our announcements. Now, you know we're getting close to uh, trunk or treat, and I know that Karen's going to lift that up in a minute, but I notice, Karen, there's a wrapper up here. <laughs> there's also a whole page of... Oh, announcements. Oh, my gosh. Well, I wonder if it's connected with the wrapper, because this has obviously been eaten, and I have not seen a candy bar that big. I have looked through all the candy, but I haven't seen one this big. Anybody guilty of eating the candy that belongs to the pastor first? <laughs> I see a hand in the sound booth. Chip, are you guilty? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, our prayers are for you. She'll mention to you about that great event here in just a moment. Go ahead, Miss Karen. Good morning, everyone. I would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone who has come to worship with us this morning. I would especially like to welcome the first-time guests. We are so happy that you've come and to worship with us. And we actually have a gift for you out in the narthex if you'd like to get it after the service. Now, for those of you who have signed in using the electronic thing, Majabur, I don't know what's app, I guess, okay, with the app, or have done it in the narthex, thank you. And if, but if you haven't, there's some red um, pew pads. If you could sign those, please, we would appreciate it. Now for our announcements. First, there's one correction in the announcements. The first is that, or actually in the bulletin, the first is that the CLM worship service at the bridge this afternoon has been canceled. And then there are a few things I would like to highlight. First, before I forget, make sure I'm saying this right. This is the last Sunday to buy greens. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. All right. See, I knew I was going to get it wrong. I didn't write it down. Next Sunday is the last Sunday to buy greens for Christmas. And now for the big trunk or treat announcement. I got a whole page here. Okay, we'll still need people to do a trunk for trunk or treat. We don't have enough. Sign up on the sheet in the narthex if you can do one and take, on, take an information sheet. We also need candy donations. If you can't get to the store, you may donate money. Just get it to Jennifer. Thank you, Mimich. She is going to Sam's on Tuesday and will buy it. Or you can drop it in the offering plate in an envelope marked candy on the outside. Okay, now for the other announcements. So everybody is invited Tuesday night at 6 o'clock in the sanctuary for a discussion on the building, a new building in the future. We are also at that time going to approve our budget for 2025, which we decided to do at our last meeting. Wednesday night at six in the fellowship hall is our worship service for Crossroads Ministry, that's the new ministry, and we would like to invite our entire congregation. The following week, November 6th, will be when we'll open the service to the community. And the last one is Thursday night from 5.30 to 7.30 is our trunk or treat. You guys have heard that before. So please, everybody who can, um, come and just join in the fellowship during that time. Now, Susie Phelps will share with us the mission moment. Good morning. My name is Susie Phillips, and along with my husband, Mike, we oversee the Family Resource Center mission. The center is located in Hernando and is run by R.J. Fontana. Their motto is help, grow, sustain. The center is there to provide support and respect to community members in need through their well-stocked clothing boutique, food pantry, programs like Bike to Work, information referral resources, their computer lab, and health clinic. They also have an annual Christmas project ensuring that every child feels the season's warmth from sponsored donations. In 2023, 
they provided gifts to 1,965 children. During our church's recent missions fair, we had sponsors sign up for 14 children for Christmas 2024. A new Florida law affecting the homeless began October the 1st. The new law prohibits sleeping or camping in public places. The Resource Center was the agency that supervised the furnishing of meals to the homeless by five churches, which we, our church, was one of the five in a facility called Connections in Hernando. Since the new law went into effect regarding the homeless, we are no longer providing meals to Connections. RJ is using this facility to store and wrap all the Christmas donations. This has freed up approximately 1,800 square feet at the center. They are now in the process of remodeling the entire center, 3,000 square feet. In addition to the clothing boutique and food pantry, the center will now house the health clinic, two doctors and eight nurses, and the computer lab. The remodeling is made possible by donations from churches and local businesses. The center still has families that come by that are living in their vehicles and need food. RJ does have a special area in the food pantry that he stocks with pop-top cans of food like applesauce and fruit and packages of tuna and chicken that can be torn open. We do purchase these items for the center and regular food supplies. Our deep appreciation goes out to all who have for years donated clothes, <coughs> used bikes, and canned goods. During the past year, we had a food drive for the center and our Second Life thrift shop set up a display at the shop for the public to donate food. They still have the display up and are still receiving food. They bring the donations to the church and we take them to the resource center. If you feel led to help with this ministry in a monetary way, either with cash, there are J dollars, Jesus dollars, on the round table in the, in the narthex, or by check, it would be so appreciated. If you write a check, please enter FRC on the memo line. In closing, Mike and I would like to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for helping feed and clothe God's children. Thank you. Thank you, Susie and Mike. They have been our representatives in that wonderful ministry for many, many years. Saying that, it reminded me, and I've mentioned this at all services now, that uh, there is a need in our own food pantry. And Susie has out there on the Welcome Center a list of what we use as staple items and uh, that they can uh, take care of those. And if I understand Susie, they can see what there is need so that we can give out groceries. Is that right, Matt? So that would be a great help for us as well in the ministry that we have. I'm going to ask Karen if you'll give us our invocation and then our prelude that Matt's going to give to us is titled The Gift of Love. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the love you show us every day. Be with us this morning and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and minds to receive what you, have, what you have for us this morning. Amen. The altar is open.
Good morning. If everyone would join me this morning for our hymn of praise, and if you'll find those hymnals, and we'll turn to page 170, and we'll stand and sing all three verses of Oh How I Love Jesus, page 170. <laughs> Let us remain standing as we continue our worship. Miss Karen will lead us. Please open, your, please open your hymnals to page 769, and we're going to be doing Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. Bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor cried out, and the Lord heard and save them out of all their troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Please join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and his only Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
please be seated and turn into your bulletin, if you will, the new format we have that Brother Matt has given to us. We love, but if you'll turn to your prayer concerns, we do have some new ones to add. We want to begin with a couple of praise reports, and then we'll do our confession together. We just praise the Lord for the women's uh, gathering. They've had the last couple of days that took many days in preparation. Um, but I know that there's a bounty of their mission and ministry will just be a blessing to all of us into the thousands of dollars, I understand. And the men did a tremendous job with their wonderful pulled pork from Brother Bud and those who assisted him as well. All those proceeds, again, go for mission and ministry. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. And also, we do have our last river baptism now, November the 8th. Time will have changed. Changes next Sunday, so make sure you have your clocks turned back. And uh, it'll be after that, the next Friday, November the 8th. And uh, we'll meet at Rio Vista Park. We have a number of folks that want to be baptized. We want to do one more before the snows come in this year, okay? <laughs> want you to look to the screen, if you will, for our reading. We're going to do this two more weeks as we have our election. Second Chronicles 714. Let's read it together. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Doesn't our nation need those words? Amen? Amen. A uh, couple prayer concerns, Karen. Uh, Danny Simpkins, surgery. He's uh, part of our Methodist men, has been moved to this Tuesday at Shands valve replacement. So if we can keep him in our prayers. Uh, Val Carnicia's surgery is now November the 5th at the VA in Gainesville. So that'll be a couple weeks to go. Roxanne Barnes is home from the hospital. They did do surgery from her bad fall and there were three breaks, fractures in her left arm and her wrist area. So wow. please keep her in your prayers. Um, her mom was here with her nephew, Eric, uh, at the early service today. So she's doing okay, but it's just going to take a while. I know many of you are very close friends to her. Saying that, another dear lady in our church just had a fall yesterday and was in the ER with some broken bones, and that was our previous secretary, Deb Purvis, it was a severe fall. And so I talked to her late last night. She'd been in the emergency room for a good while. So keep Deb and Charlie uh, in your prayers as well. Um, we want to remember our speaker today, uh, Brother Mike Wine. Um, he's waiting on his first grandbaby. It should be any time. <laughs> so uh, all the family's very anxious. And Rebecca's at home, his wife, and down in her back, of all things, you know, to happen. So the whole family just needs our prayers. If you can add them to the oh. list. Well, that was kind of holy there, Mike. <laughs> uh, the, grandbaby's the grandbaby's on the way. There you go. Uh, one last one that I do have for us, Karen. I was looking at the globe, and as we're praying for our country, uh, the tropical storms and hurricanes, tornadoes of our country, I looked at the Philippines, other side of the world, and it's been devastated recently, just in the last few days, for a terrible tropical storm. So many have lost their lives. So if you can pencil that in as well. And any prayer concern that we're not aware of, you can put it on a prayer card, drop it in the offering plate, or put it online. Ms. Karen? Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that you're in our lives, Lord God. And Father, we lift up all the people that the pastor mentioned and the people that are on the bulletin. But Lord, I'm sure we all have people in our hearts and in our minds that need prayer right now, Lord God. So Father, let us pray for everyone, Lord God, because you are the only solution often to any of these prayers. And even if he uses other people, we know that you're still moving in the background. And Father, we just thank you that we know that you hear our prayers and that you're always with us and that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Father, I lift up all the people that the pastor mentioned and those whose names are on the bulletin and those who are in our hearts. Lord God, I pray that you will hold these people in the palm of your hand. I pray for those who are sick that you will heal them. For those who have an upcoming surgery that you would guide the doctor's hand and it will go well. For those who are recovering from an operation that you would uplift them with the power of your Holy Spirit, that they would heal quickly. 
I pray for those who might be discouraged that you would encourage them. For those who are distressed, that you would give them your peace and your wisdom. And Father, I especially hold up the people that have been through the hurricane, Lord God. I pray, Father, that you will restore what was lost to them, Father, and that they will be able to quickly, Father, um, get help to restore things and to put their lives back in order, Lord God. And Father, I just want to thank you most of all for being in our lives. It's something that we cannot measure, but it's something that is infinitely precious. And right now, I'd just like to pause for just a silent moment of prayer for you to pray for anybody that's in your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Now let us all pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of God's word. This is coming from Mark 10, let me get it over here, verses 46 through 52. Then they came to Jericho, and Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Tamas, was sitting by the roadside banging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us remain standing as we bring our offering forward now and sing the praises of our doxology. Thank you, Lord, for the generous gifts of your people. May this church use them to honor your name and to glorify you. Your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let us remain standing for our continual singing his praises. Miss June? If you'll draw me for our hymn of, of preparation on page 110, we will sing the first and second verses of A Mighty Fortress is Our God, 110. <laughs>
You sound great. What a great Reformation hymn. You may be seated, and our music will continue to bless you and draw you closer to the kingdom of God. Can we all say amen? amen? You watch over me. Isn't our Lord amazing? We as Methodists follow the liturgical calendar. So next Sunday, those of you that are going to be able to be with us or those online worshiping with us as well, it is our tradition uh, on the Sunday closest to All Saints Day that we would read the names of those that have gone on to heaven that were members of our church. Every year it's between 20 and 30, so it becomes kind of an emotional moment as well. We'll have their names on the screen. I'll get with Chip and Matt to make sure we have all of that, and it becomes a real act of worship in our service. Remember again that as Christians, that Halloween that we celebrate and encourage and try to encourage the kids to find the Lord as well, we give out our tracks, we had our trunk or treat, but truly on the liturgical church calendar, it is Hallowed's Eve. It is a holy evening before November the 1st, which is All Saints Day. And that's the reason that we celebrate these different activities. The Sunday before that on the church calendar is always called Reformation Sunday. And we've had so many great uh, leaders over the years that have been amazing in reforming the church. Folks like uh, John Calvin and Martin Luther and Mr. Swingley from Switzerland, and our own Mr. Wesley. And we, I mentioned in the other services, are also reformers, for we saw a need in the United Methodist Church, and eventually over the years became global Methodists. Can we all say amen? amen? So I wanted to give you a bit of a history lesson on why we called this Sunday Reformation. It's a beautiful passage of Scripture, and we've asked our own missionary to families and youth and children, Brother Mike Wine, to give us our message today. He does a tremendous job at the high school with the kids, celebrate recovery here, taking care of folks, and the new service that's right on the brink of happening, Crossroads. Brother Mike. Good morning. I, uh, I thought this passage of Scripture, um, when, when I first started 
trying to determine uh, directionally where I wanted to go and praying, Holy Spirit, guide me. Not only is it, a, is it an amazing story of faith, Bartimaeus' faith, I started thinking it's also the beginning of his testimony. Our testimony starts when we begin following Jesus, right? Now, we have our story before we came to Jesus, but our testimony about who Christ is starts. So I thought this was, um, was really interesting, and, and I want to share a little bit with you. So the first thing that happened to Bartimaeus in, these, in the Scripture is um, he had a cry for desperation. It says he was a beggar on the side of the road, so I think it's fair to assume that he had more struggles in his life than just blindness, right? He, he, was, he had probably, not probably, we all have sin in our life. Um, so his cry of desperation, he needed something. He probably had tried on his own will to see his life change. And, and when I know when I've gotten to that place of realizing I can't do it anymore, it's time to cry out. He didn't want to live the life he was healing. How often are we in desperate situations? And, and I know for me, I can real easily decide I'm going to fix this. I'm going to take control. I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I'm going to use my self-will. And we're going to plow through this. Or in our desperation, do we realize the best thing we can do, the best thing to get through any situation is to call out, to cry out. The second thing that happened was he encountered obstacles. He's crying out. He, he's only heard of Jesus. He hasn't met him, but he still has the faith to cry out. And, and the first thing he hears is, shh, stop. To him, that had to have been a no. Think about that. The disciples walking with Jesus, I'm sure he probably saw as, as important people around Jesus are telling him to be quiet. He could have taken that no for an answer, but instead in the face of the adversity, in the face of, of the no, he stood firm. And what did he do? He kept asking. He did not stop asking because there were obstacles. He continued to cry out to Jesus. Um, his faith rose above his discouragement. Sometimes it takes our faith to rise above our discouragement before we realize there are things in our life we need to change. In the face of discouragement, what do we do? Do we persist in our faith? Or do we cry out to Jesus? Bartimaeus stood firm and continued reaching for Jesus. Now, when we cry out to Jesus, guess who answers that cry? Jesus? Amen? Right. Jesus does. So he cries out to Jesus, and Jesus stops. He stops what he's doing. He stops walking with the crowd. He stops. He calls to Bartimaeus. Now, I know that one of the things that has uh, really helped uh, in the last three or four or five years, my walk with Jesus, is stopping to listen. Had Bartimaeus not listened, listened for that call, had he missed it, what would have happened? I know when I pray or are or, or one of the, the ways that... Um, that I, I've grown in my prayer life is I stopped talking. A great example, I had the coolest thing happen the other day. Um, I was listening to a devotional, and, and, and what was being shared was, try this to see if it changes your prayer life. Open your prayer with Daddy. He's our Daddy, our Abba Father. He's our Daddy. It changed how my prayer life was, um, how I was approaching it. And I was praying that, and I decided, all right, I'm not going to say amen. It was at night. I was laying in bed, and I said, Daddy, I just want to hang out with you. I'm done talking. 
Well, he took the struggles in my life and started pointing out the silly, worldly ways I might be looking at them. And I started laughing audibly. I had to get out of bed and go in the other room so I didn't wake my wife up. God had never, never come to me with the sense of humor that he did. But God loves us. He loves laughter. He loves, he loves having a sense of humor. But that was all because I rested in Jesus. I listened. I stood. Stopped talking, which if some of you know me is not always easy. Um, he's always available. He stopped because he's always available. He's attentive to our needs. He cries out and answers our prayer. But here's what I think was so amazing about him stopping. I believe that him stopping illustrates the heart that he has for his sons and daughters. The heart that he has for a beggar, a blind beggar, that we might just walk by. He heard his cry and he stopped because he loves us that much. He wants to see our lives changed and transformed through the power of Jesus Christ when we cry out. So he stops to listen. He's always available. And then Bartimaeus shows this act of faith. He takes his cloak off, right? I, I see that as a, as a symbol of he's, he's taking off the old life. He's tossing the old life aside. And he's getting ready to step in to a new life with Jesus. And Jesus says to him, what do you want? Huh. What do you want? Well, he knows. Why would he ask that? Because he wants us to ask. He wants us to say, Jesus, I need help in this area. And we all have areas we need help. It doesn't matter how long we've been in Jesus. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter if we're in full-time ministry, part-time ministry, or we're a sales guy, or we're a secretary, or we're a stay-at-home mom, or we're just a great dad. It doesn't matter. So Jesus calls him, what do you want me? And he says, Rabbi, I, I want to see. And he healed him. But what did he say healed him? What did he say? Your faith. Our faith in Jesus is what brings us to salvation. I can't think of more something more important in our lives in Christ than unconditional faith. If we don't believe the promises that God makes to us, the promises of how He's going to care for us, the promises of a not simpler life, but a better life that He promises, if we don't own that, if we, if we haven't internalized that, we're going to struggle. We're going to be in a worldly struggle that, that we don't want to be in. So um, are we willing to express our needs and have the faith that Jesus will meet them? Bartimaeus did. Remember, in this time, there weren't a whole lot of people around the world like, like in this room. If you take all the churches in Denelan and all the believers and say, send them out on the street, look how many people would be out there um, uh, witnessing for Jesus. He, he heard about Jesus. He hadn't seen a miracle. He's probably heard about him, but he hadn't seen one with his own eyes. He just had faith. He doesn't return to his old life. He steps in the new and he follows Jesus. He didn't stay where he was. When we become believers, we have a choice. Our, found, our, our, uh, our salvation is secure. But do we want to follow Jesus? Do we want to pick up the cross and follow him so that he can transform our lives? Because when he transforms our lives, we get to advance the kingdom through the power of Jesus. We can't do it on our own, but what do you think when Bartimaeus bumps into uh, uh, another person that's having struggles and he says, this is what I experienced when I had faith, when I called out to Jesus. So, I have a little illustration. 
and I think it's I think it'll clarify things. Um, assuming that my explanation's been unclear so far. So um, when we decide to follow Jesus, our lives become radically radically different. So I kind of want to pick up. All right, I want to pick up where. Bartimaeus is following Jesus. And, and, and I'm going to take some liberty and go from there and say that he was probably discipled and discipled well since he was walking with the disciples. I can't think of probably a better way to be discipled than walking live in the flesh with Jesus and the disciples. So what I've done, um, Matthew 17, 20 says, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountains, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible with faith. So here we are, all right? This is us. This is the sons and daughters of God. This is Jesus, the living water. Very refreshing. And this is the enemy. And the enemy has many schemes. Many schemes. And in this cup are, I'm going to call them sin stones. In this cup are several stones. And these represent our sin. We have some big sin. We have sins that maybe we only fall into every now and then. And we have sins that are recurring. And so our life gets filled up with the schemes of the enemy. With, with really anything that we do, how we're living, that's outside of the Word of God. That could be lack of faith. We, we can think of sin as behaviors that are... Um, uh, it's easier for us to spot the big things in our life that we know we shouldn't do, but do we ever introspectively look at, is our life where Jesus wants it to be? Are we being the man and woman of God that he wants us to be? So, Bartimaeus follows Jesus. He's got Jesus in his life now. He's still got all this junk because he's just learning to follow Jesus. Does he know yet he can rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus and start healing his life from all of these struggles and the desperation, not just his blindness? You know, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you don't convict us of every sin we have at one time. I can't imagine if that was heaped on us. But the Holy Spirit's timing is perfect. And if we ask and if we listen, he will start revealing areas of our life that are keeping us from becoming more like Jesus, keeping us from the life, the wonderful life that Jesus has promised. So what do we do? We take our faith as small as a mustard seed. So the Bible says exercising faith can destroy fear and doubt. Exercising. What that tells me is, and, and I experienced it, you know, some people, some people learned about Jesus very young and have been believers all their life. They were still sinners before they found Jesus. Some of us, it took a little longer to get there. We were sinners before Jesus. But once Jesus is in us and we have faith and we learn that I want to be more like Jesus, it might be time to say, ooh, that was for being dishonest on my taxes. Let's get rid of that. Oh, yeah, I used to call into work sick a lot when I wasn't sick. Woo! There's some days I didn't do anything at work instead of working the way God wants me to. Now, there's some people in my life that I need to ask for forgiveness. Do I have faith that God will, will handle that for me? Yeah, because relationships are important to him. So, starting to make amends with all the people, ask for forgiveness. More and more of that's going away. And then I think of the Scripture that says, if you come to the altar, therefore, and realize a brother has something against you or sister... 
doesn't say I made a mistake and need to ask for forgiveness. If I know someone has a struggle with me or a problem with me, he says, go and reconcile before you bring your offering. Why is that important? Because relationships matter. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. God's not looking at us to to decide who made the biggest mistake, who was the most unfair. God wants us to reconcile because he loves us unconditionally. And if we're going to love others unconditionally, we might have to clear the air. So we're going to start doing a little of that. We're going to get this out. We're going to get some of this unforgiveness out. Oh, my gosh, I respond horribly sometimes to my wife with anger. Oh my gosh, sometimes when I get anger, I bury it. I bury it inside. You know, there's two ways to handle anger. We like to think of the bad anger as the person who's loud and aggressive. God wants us to handle situations, not bury them. I got I to gotta get those out. Uh-oh, there's people that I need to forgive for harms they did to me. Now, look, I've got a lot of that out of the way. Jesus says if we're faithful with little, little, he'll give us more. Oh, more faith. More faith is coming in. Now what? Well, someone that's discipling me or something I read in the Word of God or the Holy Spirit just says, here's another little thing, Mike. Pick it up and we get it out. Now, as I walk in faith, Look how much Jesus I have. A lot more than when I started. But here's what's going to happen. The enemy's not done because he doesn't like that I'm following Jesus. So he's going to sneak that unforgiveness back in. He's got all this unforgiveness. But you know what? I already know because Jesus has done it in my life that he's taken that unforgiveness I say, enemy, get away from me in the name of Jesus. You have no place in my life. Get out of here, Satan. I win because Jesus wins, and my life is focused on Jesus. But maybe that sneaks in. But it wasn't that handful. So I've grown in that area. What's the Holy Spirit going to show me next? So as we exercise our faith... The thing that, that we say as Christians, and we often do, but I'm going to challenge you this morning to maybe take a, a, a different peek at this if you haven't before. We say, and if God answers this prayer, we will give Him the glory. And He answers my prayer, and I say, thank you, God. You're an amazing God. I give you the glory. Well, God wants us to advance His kingdom. I know God loves the worship from that, but what would it be if I said that to God and then every day I look for those little things that God did or maybe big things and I say, guess what happened today, Pastor Eddie? I was in traffic. You know I struggle with anger because I have an accountability partner. He knows me. I know him. We're walking together in Jesus. He's mentoring and discipling me. I'm mentoring and discipling others, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing to advance the kingdom. What happens if we start telling people, you are never going to guess what happened to me? I was at work, and this guy came at me, or this lady came at me, and I didn't respond poorly wait I just said I didn't respond poorly and you know what God gave me the power to not respond in the fleshly way that I wanted to and that relationship is healed now you've told someone that and then you tell them something else and you tell someone else something else so now all of a sudden you've got these Bartimaeuses that are hearing about Jesus remember he'd only heard but his testimony grew just like ours does And when we can share what Jesus has done in our life with others, it all of a sudden starts becoming clear. As an atheist, I needed it proven to me. I wanted it in black and white. I didn't get it in black and white. You know what I got? God put a person in my life 
that was walking in Christ, that told me the miracles that kept happening every day. It is a miracle when a person that struggles with anger holds their tongue and doesn't shoot off at the next person. It is a miracle when we respond to our children with love no matter how frustrated we are. I can promise you for sure me, I can't do that on my own. I can only do that through the power of Jesus. So now I'm a parent that people are looking at and they want to know how I have such a great relationship with my kids. God gets the glory, and I tell them that. So now people desire to be Christ, be more Christ-like. People desire to know Him. If God is calling us to advance the kingdom, we need to do more than just say, God, I give you the glory. If we're going to give Him the glory, we need to tell everybody. It needs to not be in here. I love that we share those stories among us. It inspires me and encourages me every single day when I hear the praise reports when I see people encouraged that's great but there's a lot going on out there and they need us they need us to show them Jesus so they can cry out in desperation when they cry out in desperation just like Bartimaeus we need to help them through the obstacles we need to be walking with them so that they learn and when they get through one obstacle they say wow that's how Jesus works I'm going to start doing that and more and pretty soon their box of sin rocks is a cup ha <laughs> good it's over here it's a cup of the enemy's junk that Jesus throws in the trash. We don't have to live like that. If you don't want to, it takes faith. It takes believing that Jesus will transform your life if you ask Him. If you ask Him. Let's pray. God, we thank You. Daddy, we thank You. Thank you for loving us and being the dad that we may or may not have had. Well, actually, we did not have because there is no perfect dad other than you. You are our father. You are our daddy. God, show us. Show us those areas of our lives that need to be cleaned up. We don't even know them all, but we want to, God. And when you do, and when our lives become transformed, and in the process of this sanctification, in the process of this transformation, God, we're going to give you the glory. We're not going to just share that glory with you, and we're not just going to share it within the walls of our amazing church. We're going to share it there, God, and we thank you for the encouragement that comes from that. We're going to share it out in our community. We're going to bring hope to our community that only happens through the love of Jesus. We know that nobody's lives can be transformed by pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. Our self-will got us with a box full of rocks. But your love and our unconditional faith, our ability when we're going through hard times to say, I don't know what's going on here. It's so hard. I wish I knew. But, God's in control and I trust him. That peace and joy that comes from that, that peace of mind is attractive to the people out there hurting. Help us advance your kingdom this week, God. Help us tell one person something this week that you've done in our life and how you accomplish that. Grow our testimonies, God. I can only imagine what Bartimaeus' testimony was as he followed Jesus. We don't know. But what I do know is that you promise us a better life and he lived it because of his faith and because he followed you. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. amen. Thank you. Mike. Fantastic. Can we say amen again? Amen. As... If anybody's thirsty, let me know. Jesus was more refreshing out of the fall. That, do, that doesn't look too good. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. What a great analogy. Let's take a moment, uh, a meditation. Miss Karen, our liturgist today, brought this to our attention a few weeks back. And just pray, Holy Spirit, now from the sermon, what would be one of those rocks in 
my life, your life. Take just a moment. Remember the sermon. And may all of God's people once again say, Amen. Amen. That's powerful. What a great story for us today on Reformation Sunday. Let's all stand together, and Miss June and the choir will lead us in our closing hymn. And as we mention each week, the altar is always open. If you'll join me for our hymn of benediction on page 348, and we'll sing the first two verses of Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. Thank you, Mike, for that sermon. That was really good. I really liked your demonstration. During the prelude, if you want to jot down what God has spoken to you, just go ahead and take your bulletin and jot it down. And then when you get home, put it somewhere you're going to see it to remind you of what you want to do with this sermon this week. Now let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. It is our tradition for all to remain standing during the postlude. Karen and Mike will be in the narthex. I'm going to be departing right at the end of the postlude to go to Williston Global Methodist Church. Uh, they're going to be holding their conference in 30 minutes, uh, just as we had their pastor assisting us. Now I'll go over there and assist them uh, as the presiding elder for their church. The title of our postlude today, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Wonderful, Brother Matt. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Turn around as the family of God and greet one another. We hope to see you next Sunday morning.